Welcome to Conversations with Toy, a blogcast tackling life one episode at a time. This is the time to air out life's craziest moments. This space is all about speaking about life's hang-ups and ways in which we can leave better than when we started. Topics are all about ways we can find space to be better in life, love, mental space and health. Happy Friday. I hope that you have had the most amazing week because I have. This week has been pretty good. It has had some great highs and not too many lows. So I think for that, that's a win. A win is a win. If this is your first time tuning into Conversations with Toy, welcome. In this space, we talk about mental health, wellness, everything that's happening on, well, not everything, but a few things that are happening on these internet streets and just things that we need to be aware of. In this week's episode, I want to talk about Easter, Easter traditions, and all of those things, and we're going to talk about stress awareness. However, parents, are we coloring eggs this year? Because see, the way these eggs are set up, the price of eggs has gone all the way up. And I kind of bought my kids some ceramic eggs so they can paint them, Meaning it's like one big egg per child and they can just paint to their heart's content. Cause I don't, I don't know if I want to sit there and spend this type of money on eggs for them to color. Now keep in mind, my particular kids eat through a whole bunch of regular eggs. So then if I'm coloring eggs, there's only one child that actually likes uh, boiled eggs. So then it would just be a waste. I want to help them keep with the tradition of coloring these eggs but I don't necessarily want it to be a thing where the eggs go to waste. So I'm in a rock and a hard place. Do I buy eggs and let them color it like the traditional, you know, the the traditional way? Or do I just be like, listen, we're just going to color the ceramic egg and keep it pushing. Haven't decided, but we still keeping that ceramic egg because it's purchased already. Um, This week has been great. If you did not get a chance to listen to last week's episode with Kevin Ross, do yourself a favor and go ahead and listen to it. If you ask me or asking yourself, who is Kevin Ross? You already need to listen to the episode. I was completely honored to do that episode with him. You know, I am an actual fan of his music. I didn't have to do a lot of research for that particular um, episode because I really do love his music. I really do love him, you know, not him, but his music. And it was just refreshing to one, hear his story in his own words. You know, you can hear write-ups about different people when they write up things in blogs or different things in magazines or in news articles, but to hear it from his own words about how he's, you know, working hard out here and trying to do the best he can to put out good quality music. And one of the things that I did take away from that episode when he said, you know, he's not everybody's pick. And, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of the reality of life. We're not going to be everybody's pick. But for those who we are here for, it's going to resonate. It's going to stick. And so, you know, we love to hear when people feel like they've counted themselves out or people have counted them out and you just keep on pushing because, I mean, I feel like my blog and the podcast, that's how it started. If you don't know by now, I am a po- uh, not only a podcaster, but I am a blogger and a content creator. And you can always find the blog at www.toi. T-I-M-E dot org. That is toytime.org. It's just, this journey has been amazing. And again, I just loved how Kevin brought all that together. And, you know, I was able to, you know, you guys were listening to the episode, but I was able to see him while we were recording it. And I was able to see his son and see all the beautiful things that he's trying to create. It's amazing. And so again, go back and listen to last week's episode It was a good one. I had been on cloud nine all last week. I didn't tell too many people only because again, you know, things always change up. Anything could be, you know, different. And I just wanted to make sure that it went down. But now that it has gone down, it is out there. It's an amazing episode and I'm just proud of it. Now, this week has been very good. I went to my doctor to do a follow-up on the medication that I have now started to take for my mental wealth and mental wellness. And let me just say, 
So when I started to, this was about maybe six weeks ago or a little more than that, I went to my doctor because I was feeling overwhelmed. I was feeling stressed. I was feeling like my mental health was, you know, at the brink of breaking. And I had done all of the things that I knew to do. You know, I got a therapist. I was talking to my therapist. I, you know, had certain tools that I used like self-care and different things and little, you know, things that I put into place so that it would help me in the midst of the situation where I feel overwhelmed. And after I had used every tool that I knew or that I had the energy to tap into, I decided to go talk to my family doctor or my personal doctor, not necessarily my family doctor, but my personal doctor and talk about, you know, should or should I not get medication? Now, let me just preface and say, I am not encouraging everybody to be on medication at all. I am encouraging you though, to find what works for you. So if medication temporarily or ongoing is something that you want to explore, I would rather for you to explore it than to take it off the table completely, need it and not have it, right? And if you explore it and you discover that you only need it for a season, talk to your doctor about what that may look like. You should never start any type of medication for your mental health and then stop it abruptly. Make sure that you have your doctor, you guys work as a team to figure out what you need. The one thing I appreciated from my particular doctor was that she and I came up with the plan together. It wasn't me listening to her and she's telling me her professional opinion. She gave her pers- her professional opinion after she heard what my concerns with taking medication would be. Um, some of my concerns and maybe some of your concerns may be, you know, will it alter your personality? Um, will it cause you to be drowsy or sleepy? For me, sex drive is important. I did not want to lose um, my sex drive whatsoever. I'm a happily married woman and happily married women or women in general like to do things that grown women do. And I don't want to lose that. So I talked about that. I wanted to make sure like things like my hair not falling out and just different little attributes of, again, taking any medication, you should always bring your concerns to your doctor. And what I liked about the conversation that she and I had was she listened first. She listened first. She had a list of things that she thought would work and she listened first. And we went through every last one, what the pros were, what are some of the cons. And we came to a conclusion of which medication that I should take. I will say that the only drawback is that I was experiencing some, some headaches here and there. But when we talked about it at this follow up, she discovered that, or we just kind of discovered together that maybe the headaches are coming together because on days that I'm not eating enough and taking the medication could be causing the headache. For instance, after that appointment, I went and took my medication and I had a lot of food with it and I did not have a headache. I drank a lot of water, which I drink a lot of water all throughout the day. And so I didn't have any of those issues. So I'm grateful for that. And so again, I am not encouraging that everybody has to take medication. I have never said that a day of my life. I am telling you that there are certain tools that are necessary to help you to be your best self. And for me as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, I want my home environment to be a peaceful place where they, my kids can enjoy being at home and love that space that they're in. And if I'm not taking care of my mental health, if I'm not taking care of me, I can't provide that space for them. So although I took the medication for myself, my family benefits from it because who wants to be in a stressful household because I'm trying to figure out how to manage my stress and sometimes I'm missing it and sometimes I'm on point which we all have those moments. But in general, I don't want my home to be all helter skelter emotionally because I'm trying to find a way to cover myself when I can just ask for help. One of the biggest things when you're dealing with mental health, and again, I always tell you, I am not a mental health expert. I can only tell you the things that I have been through and the things that I have come through or the things that I'm experiencing, you know, temporarily or whatever or ongoing, however. But what I am talking about, I'm always going to encourage you to get the help that you need. And one of the biggest things that you are, you may struggle with, like I did, is asking for help. You know, you may just be struggling with realizing you need it, but after you realize you need it, the biggest thing is asking for help because meaning when you start to ask for help, you are telling people how vulnerable you are. You're telling people that you've, you know, you're not where you're supposed to be. You know, you have a place to get to. And since you're not there, you need help to get to the where you want to be. 
And it could be debilitating sometimes for some people because, you know, they feel like, you know, they should have things together. They should have things, you know, a little bit better and they don't. Um, the only thing I can say is, again, you're not put on this world to know everything. You're just put on this world to know how to get to whatever it is that you need. And so I asked for the help that I needed. Um, I had the support of my husband. You can go back and listen to the episode Store Love, S-T-O-R-R, Love, where I talk about the first time I discovered that I was having some mental health issues. This was dealing with postpartum depression and I didn't understand it. I talked to people that were around me. Nobody was really giving me any help that I needed. I ended up through a mutual friend telling me to, you know, maybe you should consider looking into this. I went and got the help that I needed. And in the midst of getting the help that I needed, I didn't feel like my husband was supportive enough. I felt like he was betraying me by telling people that I was on medication. He was doing, you know, just all kinds of different things. And again, we didn't know. We didn't understand. I'm not making excuses for him because he did what he did. It, it was what it was. But again, you know, this time around, I had that in the back of my mind that what if I go to get medication and this happens again, where he divulges that information to someone. So in order for me to have that to have that in the back of my mind, I actually just decided to communicate that to him. We talked about what support for me would look like. What did I need for support? Listen, I have been married to this man for over 10 years. We are coming up on our 11th year married and we have known each other for over 20 something years. It is not fair to him. It's not even fair to myself to assume that just because we've been together for such a long time, just because we know each other very well, that he would know at any given time what support would look like for me. So if you are in a situation where you're in a relationship with someone and you have a lot of assumptions that he should just know, I need you to take a step back from that because it's not fair to you specifically and it's definitely not fair to your partner. It's not. They, you know, we change because we're humans. We change the way we feel, the way we think, what we want to do, what we don't want to do. And it's just not fair to put that type of pressure on someone and expect them to know exactly where you are at any given moment. So again, I preface that if you are dealing with this situation, please speak up. It takes a great amount of maturity to be able to tell somebody what it is that you need. And it takes maturity to not place the burden on them for them to supply you with the things that you need. One of the biggest things that I've heard from friends or the people who are coupled up is the conversation that I've already told my person and I told them I needed them to support me and they're not supporting me. Just because you're asking for support does not mean you're asking for support. Let me say that one more time. Just because you're asking for support doesn't mean you're asking for support. It is important for you not just to say, I need you to support me. What does support look like for you? Please stop telling yourself that you shouldn't have to tell somebody what you need by now. They should just know we've been together forever and a day. It's not fair. Okay. Take the time to tell the person what does showing up for you look like. Be very specific right? Be very specific. I said to my husband, I need you to one, not divulge this information to other people, right? I need you to be patient with me as I figure out if the medication is working, if I have to change the dosages, right? I need you to give me a couple of minutes per day to express myself because of the different feelings that my body would be going through while I figure this out. I need you to be patient if I'm withdrawing from you. It's because I'm processing some things because I need to level out. Very specific things. Give me a couple minutes per day. Please be patient with me. And not just be patient with me, but be patient with me in how you talk. Be patient with me in how you respond first. Take in five seconds of consideration that I am still trying to figure this out. Be patient with me, right? specific things to tell your partner what it is that you need. I said to him, listen, if there's times in the midst of this medication, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel with it. If I fall asleep, 
don't judge me. Just like let me sleep or encourage me to get in the bed or help with the housework, the chores and things that need to be done or pick up something like do the dishes, cook the dinner or heat the, usually heat the, heat the dinner up because I prepare food ahead of time. Whatever it is, these are the things that I'm going to need you to do to show up for me. Specific. Not just support me. Not just telling your partner that, partner that you need the support, but not telling them what that looks like for you. Because for them, they may actually believe that they are supporting you because to them, they're, they're around. They, they're, they got your back, right? But having your back and showing up in the way you need them to show up, not the way they want to show up is a completely different thing. So if you're stressing out because of the miss of your mental health and your mental wellness or just life in general, and you are partnered or coupled up with someone who you have not been specific to, or you have told yourself that you shouldn't have to change the way you're thinking right now, because it's going to be a detriment to your relationship when you keep putting pressure on your partner to be what you haven't said you needed them to be. It's very specific of how you need them to show up, right? So I had that conversation with him. I went ahead and I remember leaving the doctor's office, getting in my car and calling my husband, right? So I'm getting ready to get on the highway and all of a sudden in the middle of driving, not, it didn't happen while I was like, I was talking to him before I pulled off. Then I began to pull off. It didn't happen when it, then it happened while I was about to get onto the highway. And anybody who lives in Philadelphia getting on 76, you already know it's going to be a mess to try to merge in with all the raggedy folks driving and all the things, right? And so I'm grabbing tissues because I got to be able to see. I got to be able to drive. There was no place for me to pull off safely. And so I'm driving and I am almost breaking down crying. Now I'm not breaking down, but just breaking down crying because there's two different things. Me crying and getting that good ugly cry is not the same thing as me breaking down to the point where I'm like, I don't know if I can drive. I don't know if I'm going to be safe. So I was breaking down crying and just emotional because again, I had to release the feeling that this situation was going to repeat itself that he and I had went through the first time. This again then shows the growth in our relationship that I could be vulnerable enough to cry or say what I needed to say in that moment as I left because I felt a relief. I felt a relief like I had finally done something for myself when it came to making sure that I was tip top and taking care of me and I needed that, right? So I got myself together, dried my tears. So when I went to the checkup this week and I got in my car, I sat there for a minute. I called my husband. We started talking and then I got in the car and I drove and my spirit was so happy. I was so joyful. I was so, I had so much peace. So it's like you left the first time and you was almost breaking down and crying in tears, right? And now you're leaving this time and you're, and you're happy and you have a smile on your face and you have a upbeat personality. You're just like really enjoying your life. And I felt all of those things as I was leaving the doctor's office. So I say all that to say there are a million and one times that you have gone through or you're continuously going through or you're going through such a hard time and it does at the moment look like you are not going to make it it looks very overwhelming it makes you think that again you're not worthy of stepping into this life where you can actually have peace and joy and happiness because why should you because of the things you've done because of the things you've said because of whatever the factors may be when i look back at those six weeks or so of being, you know, broken down or really just hurting or, you know, in pain and then leaving now, it's a total night and day. When they did the assessment, like they did the depression assessment the first time, it, the numbers were not cool. And when they did the depression assessment this time, my numbers were over 50% of a difference from the last time. So I say it wasn't a 100% fix, right? There were still some moments that I experienced, but they're not as heavy. They're not as long. They don't last as long. And that's kind of what I want, right? I want to be able to be in this world and experience bad times, but not stay there where I'm so boggled down and I can't think or I can't get up or I don't have any desire to do anything. I've said this before and I'll say this again. For me, some of my, um, my symptoms is irritability. When you feel like you have to holler or you're screaming or you're upset and you're extremely irritable is because I didn't know how to express like I'm drowning, 
right? It's like if you were in a body of water and you were legitimately driving, you would start screaming, you would start hollering, right? It's a, hey, come help me, save me, help me, save me. But when we do it, when we're irritable, when we do it, when we're crying, when we do it and we look sad and we do it for those reasons, we don't, people around us can't tell if it's help or we need help or not. And if we keep it real, sometimes when people do reach out to you or when they want to be in your corner, sometimes we push them away. So nobody knows like where you are until you say it, right? I've gotten out of the context of when people say, how are you doing? Just saying I'm okay, right? If I'm not okay, I'll say, I've trained myself to say, I'm not okay, but I'm going to get there. And some people may say, well, do you want to talk about it? And if I feel led to talk, I will. And when I don't, I'll say, I appreciate the offer. I'm not ready to talk. I'm processing and I'll get back to you. Right? So that means I allow the people to show up for me and I let them know if where I am. Even if I was like, even if, and I'm not talking about just like my friends that are close. I'm talking about just random people when they say, Hey, how are you doing? I'm, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not okay, but I'm going to get there. I'm got, you know, I'm, I'm here one more day to try to get it together. Whatever the case I may say, but I'm not telling people I'm okay when I'm not. And that may startle some people because they're used to people responding with, okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, and I'm not, right? If you're not, you're not. Now, I am okay now, but again, if you're not, you're not. Say all that as we talk about stress awareness, we are all going to deal with some level of stress. How that stress appears in your life may go one way or the other. There are times when stress comes into my life and I begin to get busy. So I'm the type of person that takes on a bunch of stuff. You're stressed. You keep taking on things, keep taking on things and keep taking on things. Eventually I'll get the things done. The stuff comes off the list, but that stress and that feeling of like anxiety, like I'm not going to get something done or something's going to fall or something's going to not be where it needs to be. That's stress, right? And then there's stress when you're dealing with your family, whether you're dealing with an aunt, a cousin, a grandparent, whomever, where you have tension in the midst of the family. And so that's a level of stress. The other level of stress is finances. If your money ain't money in, if your money ain't right, if you are struggling from paycheck to paycheck, you're going to stress immediately because as soon as you get paid, you're thinking, what didn't I pay the last time? That has to get paid non-negotiable, right? If you've made a payment arrangement, it's like, okay, listen, I got to pay you this week or a little bit here this week, that, that stress, right? Now, when you're dealing with the stress of, again, if you're a parent and you're like, my child keeps getting called, you know, I'm keep getting calls about this child. I don't know what to do. I've tried to talk to my kid. I try to be there for my child. I don't know what this child needs. I'm just going to tell you one thing, rather, no matter what your parenting style is, I need you to understand no matter if it's bad communication or whatever it may be, whatever communication your child is giving good or bad behavior, it is still a form of communication. They are trying to communicate something to you. They just haven't gotten there yet. And it's our job as a parent to figure what that is. And sometimes we get it right on the, on the nose. And then there's those times where we're like, look, Jesus, I need you to come through and show me because I done prayed about for this child. I done thought, you know, what can I do? I done took them to get resources and I just, I'm tapped out, right? That is another level of stress. You know, some people stress when they're single and they're trying to find their mate and they're dating because the dating pool, from what I've been seeing, um, is a little raggedy, right? And so, you know, you date this person, they act like they're showing up and they're the prince charming, they're all the things that you want to be in and you discover down the line after you've kind of like got a little commingled a little bit that they're not who they're supposed to be or they don't align with the where you want to be and the stress level comes up. Right. So you can have stress being a single person just because you single don't mean your life is popping. Right. I don't know why people think that. And to my single people to listen, I know you get it because you live it. I don't get that. Listen, I tell people all the time I am married, but I have never forgotten how it was when I was single. I remember the times when I would go to functions and see people coupled up and that would stress me out because I wanted the same thing, too. Right. And I wasn't getting that or I didn't have that at the moment. I remember the times when, again, you're talking to one person. I was a multi-dater. I was a multi-talker. I could talk to one, date one, to the other, but I wasn't always honest with everybody saying, hey, I'm dating this one, I'm dating that. And so you stress and trying to, you know, handle it and juggle it all. There's stress in every relationship. There's stress in every situation. 
how we do with stress matters. Stress Awareness Month is not for you to just start taking on stress. It's not like stress is going to come this month and then in May it's going to go away. That's not what this means. When you have different months or a different day where they have national whatever day, it's just really to call to light whatever it is that they're celebrating. And in the Stress Awareness Month, you're not necessarily celebrating stress. You're celebrating the fact that we can come together and figure out what are the things that we need to continue to eliminate as much stress as we possibly can. So even though I'm, you know, if I was single and I really want to be coupled with somebody, I've been like in the dating pool with my little baby toe and it isn't working out for me. How can I look at the, at my life and see value in it, even when I'm not married or I'm not coupled up or I'm not having a child or I'm not doing these different things because my life cannot be dependent upon who I'm with or who I bear. Right. And so, you know, help me to figure out how I can eliminate the stress. Maybe instead of going to baby showers, if I don't have a child, I'll just don't go to baby showers because that's just a, a, it's a stress moment for me. You know, there are women in this life who one cannot have children, one who do not want children and three who have lost children. We have to continuously be reminded that we are not in this world alone. And so stop thinking that these things are not a real life situation. And this is why don't ask a woman if she's pregnant. You don't ask a woman when she's going to get pregnant because you cannot know what's going on in that woman's life or her uterus. There are women right now trying to have a baby and they're struggling and the pain is so insurmountable and they're around people who have children and they're trying to act like everything is okay when I know that they're not. So all I have to say is again, stress comes in many forms. We have to find what works for us to eliminate as much stress as we possibly can because we can't get rid of it altogether. Things like maybe finding ways to associate in different circles. Sometimes the stress of being a friend and having certain friends in your on your roster could be a level of stress. So if you have friends who you're trying to like weed out a little bit, that could be stress and you just have to put some distance into it, right? Or you might have to add some things to it, to your to your to your life to eliminate stress. For instance, if you are struggling to put a meal on the table and you're capable of buying a meal service, take care of that. Do that. One of the concepts that I'd love, if you've ever been on TikTok, if you are on TikTok, you know that the concept of this soft life. And I talk about this on the blog this week. I can I'll try to post that into the show notes. But this concept of soft life, the ability, and it's mostly geared towards black women. It's not like, and, and let me say this now because I know somebody is going to sit and write me and say, well, white women can have the soft life too. Y'all already been living the soft life, right? Mostly for black women, we are taught that we have to be strong and we have to be hard and we have to take on all the things. We have to be there for our man and take care of these kids and not take care of ourselves. And we are so last, 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 last that women are now saying, I'm not going to be last. I'm going to enjoy the labors of my life and I'm going to enjoy the fact that I'm able to put certain pleasures that make me happy. If I want somebody to come into my home and do my hair, that's a pleasure for me that I want. I want to be able to not go into a crowded a salon and wait 15, 20 hours to get one hairstyle because your, your salon uh, stylist has booked 20 heads up ahead of you, right? I want somebody to come in and do my nails and do my pedicures for me because I don't feel like sitting in a place where I'm not sure if it's clean or whatever the case may be. I want a meal service to deliver meals to me because I'm worthy of saying this is a priority. This is going to alleviate a level of stress. I know I can get a cooked meal because I had it delivered to me. I can heat it up for myself or my family and we can eat because it's not what you eat. It's not even how you eat. It's just about eating. Right. And if you decide that you want to have milk delivered to you and you have somebody in your life telling you, well, you're not a real mom or you're not a real woman or you're not a real guy or man because you should have been able to cook it. Why are you, you too good to cook? Ignore them. Because again, this concept of soft life is the reality is that you are worthy of having certain things in your world that make your life easier. You don't have to struggle on every level, right? We're going to struggle here and there. We're going to struggle here and there. Here and there, we're going to struggle, but we ain't got to struggle for everything, right? If you're the type of person that wants to take a vacation every quarter and you can afford it and your bills are paid, ma'am, get your tan lines, go and get your swim on. 
Sir, if you can take yourself or some people or your boys or whomever every quarter, kudos, right? I'm not going to be mad because you getting your suntan. I'm going to be trying to figure out what can I do if that's something I desire. If that's something I desire, how can I get there, right? I'm not being jealous of you. I just go do that. Let me see how I can do that if I desire that, right? And so we got to get to the point where we start allowing things to also come into our life that can take the stress away. I have watched on TikTok and and, and TikTok is not all about that, but TikTok is a beautiful way to see some things happen in real life. You get to see how some people live. I didn't know that women were having, you know, different people, women or men, usually women, come in and help them like their postpartum nurse. I said, what the world? What in the actual world is a postpartum nurse? So I go on TikTok. I'm seeing, I saw like two videos and I followed this one woman. She was amazing. She is like a, um, a midwife, I believe, or some type of postpartum nurse and not nurse in the sense of medical, but just like the person that comes in and helps these women with postpartum, you know, issues, meaning she would come in. You, you know, you interview her, you do all the things she comes in. She helps you with your child. You're able to get four or five hours of sleep throughout the night without, you know, necessarily having to worry about getting up or you get up to pump, you give the, the woman the bottle, she takes care of changing the baby at night when that baby wakes up and you get to get up in the morning and you feel fresher, you feel more refreshed. Ma'am, I'm not against nobody putting that into their life just because somebody from the old school is going to say I'm not a good mother because I had somebody come in and help me. The reason why we have to have people do that is because we can't trust the family members that we have to come in and help because when they come over to help with the baby, they just want to hold the baby and go goo goo gaga. They're not coming over to fold up some of these clothes. They're not coming over to help wash the dishes. They're not holding the baby so you can get in the shower. They didn't come over with meals prepared to help you. They're not taking your other children out to the park or somewhere so they can have fun and get, you know, their time away from the baby. Where are them people at? So I always think if those people are complaining that I chose to have somebody come into my life that's going to help me with certain things and you're not helping me and you have the capability, please be quiet. Have a seat. Sit it on down. Because the reality of it is, is that we have more women in our communities and our families that stepped up and did that. We wouldn't need to have postpartum people come into our homes. However, if I could go back, I ain't trying to go back because these kids is out of the womb. They, they out. But if I could go back, I surely would have had some type of postpartum person come in and help. Because as much as I was tired, my husband was tired. He was trying to help me and do all these different things. And I would have been all right with it. Now, I know some people in my family would have said, oh, she too bougie. She's so bougie. She got to have somebody come in. Where were y'all? Where was you at? Where was your help at? Where was your help at hand at? Right? So again, stress awareness isn't just about eliminating. Sometimes it's also bringing the things you need into your life, right? If I want to hire a maid because I am running a business and I have a family to take care of, I don't care or mind somebody else coming in here to do these uh, toilets. I have two, I have a husband and a son and I swear, I don't know if their aim is ever going to be right. Because the way I'm cleaning these tables several times a week, not just a once a week thing, several times a week, I would not mind if somebody else came in here and did them toilets. I would not mind if somebody came in and wiped the uh, the mirrors off in the bathroom because I'm wiping mirrors off two times a day. When my kids go to bed, I have to clean up from their showers. And when they get up, I have to clean up from them going to the bathroom to get ready for school. Please come in and clean my mirrors. Come in here and wipe these toilets. Come on in here and bust these dishes up. Fold my laundry. I'm not against that. And neither should you. Stress awareness isn't about, you know, high-fiving stress. It's about figuring out what are your triggers? What are those things that are going to take you from one moment of stress to this moment of overload? What can I do to eliminate the things that are not working for me? And what can I bring into my life that, again, will eliminate the things that are not working? Eliminate, adding, elimination, adding the good things, taking out the bad Stress Awareness Month in April is a way to just take, fine tune your thoughts into what can you do to better your life. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting sleep. So you may need to eliminate some things out of your schedule. You may need to be very clear about putting some stops and balances in your life. Listen, stop saying you're tired. 
and you're tired and you're tired. And at nighttime, you spend four to five hours watching TV because you don't have the discipline to turn that television off and hit that DVR and let that thing record and get your behind in the shower and go ahead, go get some sleep. Sometimes it just takes plain old discipline. So again, for the month of April, challenge yourself to figure out what it is that you can eliminate. What can you bring into your life and what can you just put some discipline into your life? Because, you know, we blame everybody but us. It be the devil. It be your mom and them from stuff that happened in your childhood, which is very real and very true. But you still have the power to get through it. You blame the, the person you with and the person you ain't with and the person you was once with. Like you just come on. We got to take some personal accountability. We got to be real and honest about the things that we have going on. And sometimes we got to eliminate. Sometimes we got to add. But think about that. Challenge yourself this month to say, what can I take out? What can I add to my life that's going to help? Right? Find that balance between elimination and subtraction into your life. Or elimination and subtraction, same thing. But elimination in addition to your life. What can add and what needs to be taken away? So that is my TED Talk on stress awareness. Let's get into some Easter. This Sunday is going to be Easter. There are many people who will celebrate it for the religious purposes of saying that Jesus died on the cross and he rose on the third day. And we celebrate the new life that he has given us and all those great things. And there's some people that says, I ain't about that. I ain't here for that. I'm just here for my Easter bunny and my eggs. Do what you're going to do. I used to be in a church where all they talked about was that eggs, you know, having an Easter basket ain't everything and you shouldn't even get your kids an Easter basket and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. I'm going to tell you this. Them saying folks that said don't do, don't do was all the, actually doing it and, and being on the low with it. And then the ones that kept saying it's the devil, it's the wrong, is that child, where are they? Because where they at? I say all that to say, make Easter what you choose for it to be. If you choose to celebrate it for religious purposes, kudos to you. Amen and hallelujah, right? And if you choose to celebrate family and friendships, do that. But whatever you do, make sure you stand firm on that choice. That's all. Don't go around Aunt Sue's house when you know you don't get around with Aunt Sue. Because again, every time we gather with a holiday, every time you gather to a holiday with family and friends, if you gather around the table at the wrong table at the wrong time, I promise you, you're going to leave wherever you're at vexed and stressed. I would rather eat my meal. I would rather eat the TV dinner than to sit up at a whole table with a banquet full of food if I got to deal with some foolishness. I have eliminated that years ago. I have eliminated that years ago. I am not sitting my feet on nobody's table that I know for sure I don't, I don't like and I can't get along with, right? I ain't talking about the times I got to be high and by and I got to be nice and cordial, but if I put my feet underneath your table, it's because I want to be in commune with you. I want to dine with you. Do you know dining is an art? Let me say that one more time. Dining is an art. You should never put your feet underneath the table of somebody that you don't get along just to save face. I refuse in these almost 42 years to slide my feet under anybody's table that I choose to not get along with. I just refuse. I refuse. I'm hoping that you do the same. Stop going over to these folks' house when you know you're going to sit about and you ain't going to have a good time. You're going to be vexed. Your spirit going to be all over the place. You're going to be angry that you went because so-and-so going to make you mad. You know, they're going to tell the same stories. You don't want to hear them. Stop sliding your feet under their, underneath their table just for a piece of chicken. Go ahead to Popeye's. Listen, I even heard Popeye's got a good strawberry um, biscuit I'm trying to even taste. So go over to Popeye's and get you some chicken before you slide underneath somebody else's house and eat their chicken and you don't even like them. Stop putting yourself through unnecessary stress and drama for no reason. I don't care if it's Grandma Jenkins. I don't care if it's Aunt Sally Mae. If it's Sally Mae for the, you know, school loans, take her out. But every other Sally Mae and every other aunt, whatever name you want to call it, stop doing it, please. You can cook your own food, baby. You can go and get you a TV dinner. These TV dinners done came a long way. You can go to a, a, a pull up at a fast food restaurant, and eat better and have more peace than sitting at somebody's table that you ain't liking just because it's tradition. I'm not doing it and I'm encouraging you not to do the same because why? Because for why? Why are you doing this and torturing yourself for a holiday? 
You don't you don't think you can eat your candy and your your Easter bunny um chocolate at home in peace? Because I surely can and I surely will. Stop allowing yourself to sit up underneath somebody's table and reverse it. Stop allowing other people to sit their raggedy feet underneath your table when you know it ain't right. You know you don't like them. You know you ain't gonna do nothing. Stop having them come over to your house and stop letting them sit their raggedy feet underneath your table eating off your food, drinking your wine. For why? For why? For why? I promise you, peace can come from the Popeyes. I promise you, peace can come from even Chipotle. I promise you, you could eat ramen and be at peace before I slide my foot or have somebody else slide their foot underneath my table for why. Take control of this foolishness that we have running in our lives. We, we know we can fix, we know we can put distance in, but because we scared, we won't. If you have the sound of my voice in your ear and you are grown, meaning you live by yourself and you pay those bills by yourself for why now if you living at somebody else's house and you don't get along with them then you need to get yourself a roof get your own roof your own house and then you could stop sit underneath their table because you don't have to because for why for why please step into this easter season with some peace Step into every week with some peace. Step into every holiday with some peace. Listen, Aunt Sally Bay going to give you that gift card to Target. Buy your own Target gift card before you sit up there and leave their table for Christmas. Stop playing yourself just because well, Mama Sue going to be mad. Mama Sue going to be mad even when you show up. Even when you show up, Mama Sue going to be mad because you showed up without a husband. One more game because when you going to have a husband? When you going to have a baby? Why are y'all tripping over these people? These people are going to be good, mad with you when you show up. They're going to be mad with you when you don't show up. I'd rather for me to not show up. They still be mad and I have peace. It really, I, let me tell you, when you tap into that, you're going to be a real adult. Like you're going to be grown. Some of y'all can't even tell y'all nail tech. I, 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 that's not what I want. You can't even tell your nail tech that you gonna have problems because I'm not paying for something that ain't right. Some of y'all paying for some things that ain't right. In your emotional life, in your personal life, you're paying for it and you can't say, ah, ah, ah. I mean, I told that to my kids when they were learning how to wobble around and crawl and stuff and touch stuff. Ah, ah, ah. Why you can't do that for yourself? Why you can't do that in your own life? I need you to take charge and put some discipline and you're going to hurt some people's feelings. I need you to understand you're going to end up hurting some people's feelings. I don't even answer the people for that no more. I used to get the people, well, you don't never show up no more. You don't bring them kids around. I don't. I, 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 sorry. I don't because they don't know you. And you know why they don't know you? Because you think I'm supposed to keep bringing them to you and you will never come to me. I, 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 you mean when you was talking bad about my kid in front of my kid and they heard you and I had to correct that and you want me to show up and put my feet underneath your table? I, 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 not I. So that's why I don't show up. That's why I don't come. That's why I don't come to the family functions. That's why I don't come to the friend functions. That's why I don't come because support goes both ways. And if I showed you and told you what I need and you still ain't giving it or you're incapable, that's okay. That's okay. I'm going to eat my ramen in my house with some peace and love on my babies. And we're going to be good because I, 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 I ain't doing that. I'm just not going to do it. Easter is here. Do what you will, find some peace, celebrate the way you're going to celebrate. Some of my biggest Eastern memories were doing church plays. Now, my church used to have church, I swear to goodness, I don't even going to swear, but they used to have church twice, a day, two times on a Sunday. So you had the morning service and you had that evening service. I was a real PK. I ain't one of these play, play PKs. I was a real PK. So you had service in the morning where the pastor would do his big old speech, you know, because it was Easter as he told everybody that they was going to hell because they didn't come all the rest of the year and they showed up today. And so now, da, 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 you know, that type of service. And then at nighttime, all the kids and the adults would do their little um, plays according to their Sunday school class. So you would have the baby class and, you know, the little kid class and the teenager class and the boy class and the girl class and all these classes. And we would just get together and do these church plays. They were hilarious times. They were hilarious times. Because let me tell you, the one year I played Jesus, my brother played Jesus and my dad played Jesus. We all played Jesus that year. 
my dad was talking all that junk about, and it was junk because he was saying, oh, you better know your words, you better know your lines and know your lines. And then he did not know his. And we still to this day clown him about that to this day. But those are fond memories that I have as a kid. I remember, you know, dressing up in the little white hats and the little patent leather shoes. And you know what has destroyed Easter? Freaking Payless going out of business has destroyed Easter. We ain't had an Easter right since Payless left because where the heck do we get these shoes from? Tired of going to these little children's place and getting these plastic shoes that ain't going to last but a five minute uh, for the pictures and you got to put them on their sneakers again. Payless has really screwed over Easter. But I say all that to say those were just some of my fondest memories growing up. You know, when you have the little frilly dress and the little poofs and my mama straightening out that hair out the night before or putting my hair in them braids and beads. Those are some of my fondest memories of Easter. Right. And as a mom, I get to create those for my own children. Right. Whether we go to church or we go to online church or whatever we choose to do, we're going to be a family. We're always going to celebrate in my house. Celebration of holidays are big, meaning it doesn't even matter if it's a national such and such day. We will try to find a way to celebrate it because there are so many things going wrong in the world that you have got to learn to create the peace and the joy in your home, your peace and your joy should be flowing in your home. It may not flow every second of the day, but it should flow a lot more times than it, sh than it is right now. So in our house, we celebrate. So it don't matter what the holiday is, we celebrate. Birthdays are you make sure that person feels loved and supported and encouraged and you let them know that they've done great for their year and they get to do a new reset for their year. They get to start all over again. They get to renew that love or passion for whatever they got going on. Celebration, we celebrate. And so for Easter, my kids are going to wake up to a beautiful table decorated with the, you know, all the things, the candies, the baskets, all those things, the, the cake, all the little treats and trinkets because we celebrate and I enjoy making those memories with them. The one thing I always am going to do is I'm going to try to find a way to create a memory. My kid, my oldest is 13. She'll be 14 soon. And underneath her is an 11 year old and underneath him is a nine year old girl. Or my daughter and I'll be like I'm I'm thinking okay they're getting old so they don't want to do certain things and if I say I'm not going to do they'd be like oh man mom why and that blesses my whole heart because you know when they get 13 or getting the teenager years they don't always want to do those things that they once did because you know they're getting older but when I try to eliminate or take it out of the schedule or take it off the plate they're like why that lets me know that as a parent, I am doing my job and creating memories that they can remember because when it comes to certain times of the year for certain things, they already are like, when are we going to go do A, B, and C? When are we going to go do A, B, and C? Because they already know because those memories are placed in their mind. And whether they pick those same traditions up and do it with their children or not, they have their own. There are some memories and certain things that I've taken from my parents right? For Christmas, I have to have cinnamon rolls because I remember as a kid, my dad would always make cinnamon rolls. And so whether he's here, you know, he's here now, but if whether he goes on when he and it's his time, I'm going to remember that, right? And so when I smell cinnamon rolls, I'm going to always remember him. And I do the same for my kids. Then there's some new traditions that I do that my parents didn't do. I give my kids a new ornament every year so that when they leave Lord's will, when they get old enough, they'll have a whole set of ornaments from their childhood from one years old until 18 or even further, because I'm probably still going to be doing it for them until they get grown. But giving them a new ornament every year, I write their name on it um, and or have it in, in, engraved into it and I save it for them. And every year for Christmas, they pick out their own ornaments and place those ornaments on the tree. Now, my tree, because I just feel like that tree is for them, right? So my tree may not be the most glorious because I keep my tree up all year round and decorated for different holidays, but my tree is full of love because I'll switch that tree up now. And now we have the Easter tree and eventually I'll switch it over to like a summer tree. It's about creating memories. All I have to say is that Create the memories, create the memories for yourself. You didn't have the childhood that you wanted or you thought you should have had, but you can create it for yourself as you get older, right? You can create it for yourself. So thank you for listening to this episode. I hope that your Easter is absolutely amazing. 
The drink of, of the day is going to be a Peeps cocktail, aka a strawberry mudslide. So if you like mudslides, this drink is going to be in the show notes so that you can recreate this for your Easter holiday as you are entertaining the people. You can also make a pink mimosa, it goes without saying, and put Peeps into it. Now, I am not a Peeps person. However, you really don't even have to be a peeps person. I, I hate when when I when I give out certain recipes and people are like, "Well, I don't eat that." You you do know you can switch it around, right? Um, so, for instance, with this particular peeps mud strawberry mudslide, you just put the peeps on the edge of the cup, and if that person chooses to eat it, great. And if that person chooses not to eat it, okay. But what do you have created? You have created a very aesthetic, very beautiful cocktail that if they love mudslides, they're going to enjoy. I, one of my personal pet peeves before I end the show is when I, I have on my Facebook, my personal Facebook, and I say today is National Hot Dog Day or today is National Coffee Day, today is National Burrito Day, and somebody goes on there and says, I don't even eat burritos, then today is not your day, right? Because we don't have to hear about how you don't eat certain things on a certain day because it's not your day. Do you know how many weird and wacky National Day holidays are that there are? Honestly. There are quite a few, and I am quite confident, I am confident that at some point, your day will turn and will come around. So, again, make, if you choose, the Peeps Cocktail, which is a strawberry mudslide. It will be in the show notes, and enjoy. If you're not a drinker, I'm sure that you can variate that out and not have the alcohol into it. There's a million and one ways to do so. Be creative. Be creative. That's all I have to say. Um, have a great Easter. Have a great weekend for those who don't even celebrate Easter. Maybe Easter is not your thing. That's totally cool too. Like I said, do what best works for you. But have a great weekend. Find at least one activity that you really enjoy that is about yourself. Whether it's reading a book, whether it's taking a nap, whether it's going to the salon, whether it's meeting up with a friend. Find an activity that you love that will bring you joy that's about yourself right? It's okay to pour into yourself because while you're pouring into everybody else's cup, make time to pour into you. Thank you for listening to the episode. I am so glad that we have this space to talk about the real things that are happening in this life. And I hope that you have the most fantabulous weekend. Until we come back together again, we will come back with another episode and we'll talk about some more things because that's what we do here. This is a safe space. There are going to be times that we talk about things that make you laugh. And sometimes we talk about things that make you cry or things that make you think. But nonetheless, we talk about it. So thank you for tuning in to Conversations with Toy. And I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you as always for joining me. And I know that even in the deepest or joyful conversations, that there's something we can learn and apply. Until next time, I hope that you are doing better. If not, we will be back to talk some more and handle it. Peace to you and yours. Stay grounded.